I'm Ken Anderson with IDI Distributors. Today I'm with Ken Allison, who knows a great deal about ignition barriers, thermal barriers, and the building codes. We're going to try and straighten up some of the confusion as to when you use what product over the foam. Ken, why does IDI carry ignition barriers and thermal barriers? The main reason we carry actually intumescent coatings is the fact that a large portion of our business deals with spray foam insulation. And according to the code, all spray foam must be separated or all foam must be separated from people by a thermal barrier. Now according to the code, a thermal barrier is plywood or gypsum board, those types of materials. There's a special approval though where you can use an intumescent coating to create that thermal barrier, that 15 minute thermal barrier to give people time to exit the structure. So what is the difference between ignition barrier and thermal barrier? Okay, ignition barriers, when ignition barrier came into play, what the goal was was in areas like attics or crawl spaces where you simply have someone going in to service the mechanical. They're not using the space. They're only there to service the mechanical. In that event, a special approval was given where an, int an intumescent coating could be used as an ignition barrier. Now an ignition barrier, when they do a corner room burn test, which is lighting a 12 foot by 8 foot room on fire with a crib in the corner and you have a certain amount of time before the flames roll out of that room. Well in that case, an ignition barrier gave that person working on the mechanical up to 4 minutes and 20 seconds or greater than 4 minutes and 19 seconds to escape that room or that area. In the case of a thermal barrier, it had to pass the full test or the equivalency of a thermal barrier, which was a 15 minute burn test. Okay. So now if I go and spray foam a house in a particular space like an attic or a crawl space, how do I know if I need to use the thermal barrier or the ignition barrier? What's, what's the code say about that? It's actually very simple, Ken. The code is quite clear about when you use them. An ignition barrier can only be used where the only entrance to that space is for the service of mechanical, meaning someone's going in there to work on it. If there's a door, if there's decking on the floor, if they're storing anything up there, at that point you have to use a thermal barrier. It's that simple. There's no way around it. If you're adding additional fuel to the space or putting people in the space that will be in and out of there, it's a thermal barrier. Okay. Well, what if uh you and the code official dig disagree on what that space is going to be used for. Who's got the last word? In that case, no matter what, Ken, every time the code official rules, you need to check with your local jurisdiction to understand what they will and what they won't approve. Great. So, Ken, can, can these intumescent coatings be used over any foams? I'm glad you asked, Ken. In actuality, a foam has to be approved and tested with the intumescent coating you're putting on top of it. So what you need to do is make sure you go and check out either the ESR, the Evaluation Services Report, or the testing for that particular foam. You can only use a coating approved over that foam. And here at IDI, the only coatings we carry are the ones approved over each of the foams that we sell, as well as many of the others in the market. So feel free to come by and we can actually help you out with that as well. Great. So I hope that clears up some of the confusion as to what products to use and when. I'm Ken Anderson with IDI Distributors. Thanks for watching.